Shalom, beloved saints, those who are called, chosen, and those who choose to be chosen, followers of Christ. Uh, let us begin today with the Lord, Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive all those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Bapa kami yang di surga, dikuduskanlah namamu, datanglah kerajaanmu, jadilah kehendakmu di bumi seperti di surga. Berikanlah kami pada hari ini makanan kami yang secukupnya, dan ampunilah kami akan kesalahan kami, seperti kami juga mengampuni orang yang bersalah kepada kami. Dan janganlah membawa kami kepada pencobaan, tetapi lepaskanlah kami daripada yang jahat, karena engkau lah yang punya kuasa kemuliaan sampai selama-lamanya. Amen. Amen. What a blessing to have the same spirit, no matter which tribe we came from, no matter the origin of the land we were born, no matter the continents we came from, yet we could speak the same language, the language of the kingdom of God, the language of the spirit of God, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for our sins. And God manifests this tremendous love, this desire in his heart for all of us to be born again of the water and the spirit. And today we have with us our dear friend, um, Lucy, all the way born from Jakarta, uh, born in Sumatra. Sumatra, sorry, Sumatra, which is the country of Indonesia, and raised there and being converted and have multi encounters with Jesus and being called and being sent to the nations, to various group, ethnic groups, different nations, different continents, to share the love of God and bring the people into the truth. Both Sister Lucy and uh, David and their family and the children, we know each other for past eight, nearly eight years. And uh, it is some relationships are eternal. Yes. Yeah, we just connected in the spirit. This is what Paul described, that we do not knowing each other by the flesh, but we knowing and recognize each other by the Spirit of God. And this is how we will be knowing each other in heaven. We're knowing each other by the Spirit, and we know that we are redeemed by the blood of Jesus. We know that we have the Spirit of God in us, and we know the gifts, the callings, the attributes. We know our place in the kingdom of God. And we all have the same access to the bosom of the Father, to the heart of God through Jesus Christ. And this is what was the prophecies of early apostles and uh, prophets like Joe, who described the end time army, that they are so tuned to God and to one another, they do not break the ranks. Yes. But in this session, uh, I would touch something that is very significant in the body of Christ. Last uh, service, Sister Lucy was preaching in our church, and it, it was just revelation being just pouring out, revelation and confirmation and affirmation that we have the same spirit. And uh, we were taught for past months the messages, and it was like confirm, even though she, Sister Lucy did not listen to those messages. She was not aware, but yet she was just pinpoint all this key and the revelation being with us in the same spirit. 
That makes us different to be in the Spirit of God, to have the Spirit of Christ. And one of them that really touched uh, our hearts is the waiting upon the Lord. Uh, Lucy was sharing about waiting upon the Lord. What did the Lord reveal it to you uh, with that subject and topic of waiting upon the Lord? How is your understanding about that? Yes, the waiting upon the Lord, um, it is, for me, is the, the main thing as, as the lover of Jesus. Because you are waiting for someone that you know that he surely is coming. And his coming, um, in this waiting, most, most of us, we wait for healing. We wait for provision. We wait for wealth. We wait for something more physical than, him, than God himself, which he own all that we are actually waiting for. And I don't know what are we, we really want to see right now because God is present. He's not the God of yesterday only or tomorrow. And even the, the, the Bible, the verses in the Bible said he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. There is no tomorrow. So waiting upon the Lord, it's actually bringing his presence to where we are. That is waiting on the Lord. And because of that, waiting on the Lord is the main thing. We do not wait for him to come. Yes, he's coming to take over. Yes, we are waiting for that. But waiting upon the Lord is more just waiting for his coming, for the judgment day, for the redemption of all things, restoration of things. But waiting for now, just even right now, we are waiting on the Lord. So in this broad way, in this 21st, 21st century church we are living, mm -hmm. not touching the world, yeah. everything is sudden. Uh, it's just passing through, uh, and uh, even the food. People are impatient in this generation. They don't know how to wait, in even patient in the queue. Yeah. Uh, so everything is instant, instant noodles, mm -hmm order and then driving through, pick it up the order and everything is instant, quick, quick, quick. And it's kind of like a quick fixing. You know, uh, many times, you know, you, you in the past was working with drug addicts, mm -hmm. right, in Indonesia. So uh, uh, there are baggages that they were addicted to drugs and they just want a quick fix, quick high to get into that supernatural realm, but not through the Spirit of God, through the mm -hmm. other door that Jesus talked about, the uh, other doors that lead to the supernatural, but Jesus is the door. So Jesus is the only door. And in this generation, you you based now in past seven years in Switzerland. How this waiting upon the Lord can be uh, is described in the in the world, for instance, or in the church. Let's say church. Yeah. But it's just, if we look at from the church, um, there is no more waiting, especially in the live streaming. You don't even have to go to, to church anymore. You just be at home and the sermon come to you. So this waiting has, has become something that we have to remind ourselves. And um, if we look, I, I just want to bring the Peter... Uh, Second Peter three, um, if I can read it quickly, just to bring how the speed has um, deleted the word of waiting, because we are coming into the speed of light. Everything artificial intelligence is coming. It's all about speed, and it's written in the in. Second Peter 3, here, I, I read from the Passion Translation, but you can read later in the other translation. I, I took this with me to travel because it's small. It's a gift from a very good friend. And here he said on the uh, verse 12, while we anticipate and help to speed up the coming of the day of God. Mm -hmm. Speed up. Yes, we are to speed up everything. If you want to talk about speed, 
the speed in and and coloration to waiting. Um, when the atmosphere will be set on fire and the heavenly bodies consume in a blaze, but as we wait. We trust in God's royal proclamation to be fulfilled. There are coming heavens new in quality and an earth new in quality where righteousness will be fully at home. So even though our spirit is quickened, the, the mature, the children of God that has been uh, a journey through the suffering, through, through enduring the life, all of us who have practices our life to be uh, fruitful spiritually that the, the fruit of the spirit coming out of our life it is all through waiting upon the Lord there is nothing produced outside of the waiting upon the Lord I was reminded while you say this of Moses uh, uh, Moses he was living uh, three pieces of his life each piece representing 40 years. Mm -hmm. In the first 40 years, he, he have best of the Egypt. He have all Egypt inside of him. He have all these artists, uh, all this AI, all this the best the, uh, degrees, uh, PhDs, and all the education because he was educated under the Pharaoh. So he was the, trained to be the head of the nation, mm -hmm. both military forces, economic, and our marketplace and governmental and also other call of deity, those gods of Egypt. And then something deep inside of him uh, was stirring in him when he saw that, that one of the Egyptian mistreat his br brother that coming from the from Israel tribe. And something inside of him rose to that calling to defend the defenseless. And he was rushing uh, to his own ability, his own flesh. Mm -hmm. his, he, he take this matter into his own hands, mm -hmm. which he did not know God. And then it caused devastation and he had to run for his life when he was, when he was take under the, the wings of the, I would say, Pastor, Pastor Jephro. Mm. Because the lineage of Jephro, he was not idol worshiper. He was the descendants of Abraham. Mm. Because Abraham have a, a, a promised wife, right? And the child by her, uh, Hara, uh, Sarah. And then, uh, of course, Hagar and Keturah. A and uh, Jephro came through the lineage generation of Keturah. Mm -hmm. So uh, Jephro <laughs> worshipped the God of Abraham, the, his forefathers. Mm -hmm. And so he was true worshippers of God, and he had a wisdom of God. So God assigned Jephro to take him under his wings when he was uh, get this Babylonian spirit out of him mm -hmm. that he... Uh, receive university from Babylon, the financial system, like today. These seven mountains of society, it was all inside of Moses. Mm -hmm. And God has to go uh, choose the uh, man and Jephro to go through the process of pruning, mm -hmm. crushing, refining, uh, we will call Gethsemane, mm -hmm. that Jesus has to go th through the crushing. Gethsemane, it means crushing like olive crush, mm -hmm. pruning or refining, like uh, Prophet Malachi talk about refiner's fire. He's a refiner. So Jesus has to go through this process of crushing, refining. Mm -hmm. So now Moses, after 40 years of refining, crushing, and pruning was ready to be sent and launched as a deliverer of Israel, of Israel out of the Egyptian bondage. Now he can stand in the front of the most powerful man on the face of the earth, Antichrist himself, because there was no Antichrist spirit inside of him. 
he decreased 100% and Christ increased. The Holy Spirit inside of him increased. So now he has authority to speak the word of God and God have a man who stand in his presence. But before that, he have this encounter that with, with God who is I am. In Hebrew, that means Ehye Asher. I am. I am always present. This is what you, Lucy says, that he is always present. Yes. He's not God who was. Okay, yes. He's not God who was working in that generation. Okay. No, he's a generational God. He's a God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. So God make himself available to whosoever come now through the blood of Jesus and to know him as he is. Moses says, all I want is your presence. If your presence doesn't go with us, we don't go. Actually, God made him wait. He was not intentionally and very different than David. David has an attitude who, who know that he need God. And Moses, he didn't know. He, he knows he's Israel. He knows he's adopted because his own mother, Miriam, raised him in the palace. But in this, in this um, God made him wait with 40 years, I think, or I don't really know how long, but until he was in the place of holiness. So the, the whole things that God allowed to happen in his life, even in the worst uh, decision he made to kill someone. He was a murderer. But God made him wait in, in the training, life training with his father-in-law. So sometimes we are also conditioned by God to wait on him and praise God. It's a grace, it's a mercy. But for the mature believer, it is time for us to come and wait on the Lord. 24-7, and that's what I would like to share. How it is a, a, a life that in constant waiting on the Lord. And that's why we are talking about the four chambers of the heart and the Revelation 3.20. Behold, I'm standing at the door, and I ask the Holy Spirit, which door I have to, because I had an encounter with doors. We are also the doors. And after I wait on the Lord, I practice waiting on the Lord, I now started to ask, Lord, I want to encounter you just for today, just for this minute, just for these hours. And many times I don't feel anything. Sometimes waiting is really is a wilderness. Sometimes it's really hardship. Sometimes it causes tears and suffering and all, all our... Um, our flesh need to be burned by the Holy Spirit. That's the powerful uh, things that happen while we're waiting. It's interesting you talk about these three chambers and four chambers of heart because the, the first piece of Moses was outer core. Yeah. It was the flesh, dealing with his flesh. Yes. Then the inner is a holy place. Is going in with the soul, the, the outer core dealing with the flesh and the soul. Mm -hmm. But inside is a holy place, mm -hmm. which is the menorah mm -hmm. and the, 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 the showbread. Mm -hmm. And then you can enter to the praise, the to the, yeah, and then holy of holies, mm -hmm. which is the spirit of God born again. The spirit, this is actually, God is saying, this was God's desire through Jesus Christ in John chapter 4 when he saw this Samaritan women, women who was a pagan worshiper, yes. who ancestor worshiped pagans. I mean, Samaritan was such an abomination. You, you read through the Bible. Mm -hmm. They could, they, they would, they would do all kind of abominable thing, detestable to the things of God. And yet, in the, in, in, the da, in the dirt of the dirt dust of the deepest darkness, Jesus have encountered with Samaritan women. He humbles himself and he went so slow and so low. He was waiting on her, on her so at the well, uh, on Jacob's lap. Well, at the well of the previous encounter. She has some knowledge 
of worship yeah. from the Jews' perspective, through the Samaritan perspective. But she was not satisfied with the religion, which was not enable her to manage her marriage and marriage her family. So she was going after the lover. She was way, she was desire love. She knew deep inside that she was created for love. Yeah. And there was love. God is love. Yeah. And God who is love was waiting upon her. Yes. Right now, in this, right there in the Samaritan well. And while she came, she came in the noon of the day. Mm -hmm. We know in Israel, it is very hot, the noon time. Mm -hmm. It is the hottest period of time. So usually women will come during the daytime, mm -hmm. the, the before sunrise mm -hmm. or sunset, yeah. when the weather is cool. But, but because she don't want to be picked on, mm -hmm. she don't want to be the one that people will point the finger, oh, she's this, this is that. Usually accuser of the bread ring will use to accuse. That is why she don't want to be gossiped upon. She don't want to be picked on. She don't want to see anybody. And this is in, the, in this moment, having contact with Jesus. And you also touch David. And David, in Psalm 46, verse 10, says, Be still. Yeah. Be still yeah. and know that He is God. So it's this waiting thing is not just we are waiting on the Lord. The Lord is waiting on us. It's a two-way of waiting. While we're waiting of on the Lord, while we're waiting on God, God is, we need to know that. We need to know and believe that God is waiting on us. So when he, is, he said in Revelation 3, Behold, I'm standing at the door. He is there first. That's what when I was praying, Lord, how do I know that you are the one that knocking at my door? Not my neighbors, um, not myself, not my agenda. How do I know? And that's what he gave me. The Holy Spirit is the sound of my knocking. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is in us. We can hear the Holy Spirit telling us, when I wake up at 1 o'clock, at 2 o'clock at midnight, um, and after the morning, or even at 12 o'clock midnight, I was awakened. I knew which one is it. I, I start to, to, to know and, and getting more. The more my obedience to wait on the Lord, um, becoming my lifestyle, it's become easy for me to recognize, oh, this is Jesus, this is the Father, this is Holy Spirit. And, and that is so much in that, in the waiting of the Lord. And we know, but the first thing like in this, in this uh, John 4 with the Samaritan, Jesus waited for the Samaritan woman and the Samaritan woman waited in her struggle. She didn't even realize that she is actually waiting. But in all the struggle that she has, and Jesus said to her, if you would drink from me, you will not thirsty anymore. And I asked the Holy Spirit, what is it that she's not thirsty for? She's not thirsty for sin. She's not thirsty for the flesh. She's not thirsty for the wealth of the world. And today we are talking about the world. We'll come into that. But that it is. That's the difference what we receive when we have an encounter when we come into the appointment with Jesus, when we come into the, because the waiting is about the appointment. In, in, in our series, Kingdom Advance, how we are advancing in the kingdom, uh, we have four appointment with Jesus and alignment, engagement, and we are advanced. And it's all started with the attitude, hard attitude. We are waiting. We are willing to wait. It's reminding me also of Elijah. He is a prophet of Elijah, you know, Elijah, prophet of fire. He has great victory over 440, 50 false prophets. Mm -hmm. His entire nation of Israel and the king and all the army, they are all facing this, this back desert cave prophets that just come up from the communion with God he don't, he don't have anything else except God. He have no crutch to lean, but except the word of the Lord. 
In the end, he, he had this powerful victory on the Mount of Carmel. All the nation began to acknowledge God where God consumed the sacrifice with fire. They fall on their knees and they, they hollow it the name of God. The Lord is God. The Lord is God. The Lord is God. And they bow in reverence and submit to the authority of God. And after that, the word of the Lord came from Jezebel. She was not there. And the, the Jezebel released the word that when the Bible talk about he saw the words of God through the servant. And I was just wondering, he saw the principality and the power of darkness that was working behind the Jezebel, mm -hmm. which is working now, now in the world, controlling the seven mountains of society. Which talk about this great beast that sit on the seven mountains in the book of Revelation. And it makes him afraid that fear took over him that he want to die. He ran for his life. And we know the story in the desert. God sent the angel, ministering spirit, to encourage him. He's not yet done with the prophet. His ministry is not yet fulfilled. Even though he, he thought this is the end. This is the end of his ministry. This is the end of serving God. He want to die. And in, in spite of all this, he lay down to sleep. Because there was no hope for him to go on. He had no energy. He just want to sleep to eternity. Many of you are up there. You are dying inside. Someone robbed you of your calling. Someone robbed you of, of your gifting. Or maybe in the people in clergy. Maybe the people in the ministry. People maybe in, in, in pastoral. Maybe apostles give you false prof prophecies. Or maybe apostles release the false, false, false message. And, and maybe witchcraft, no matter what, the darkness may put you into the corner and switch off the lights that all you want is to sleep your life throughout eternity into darkness because you don't have any hope. This is how the people who dwell in darkness, they, like this Samaritan lady, she was dwelling in darkness and suddenly she saw the light and that light Cause her to give her hope and, and courage and strength to pull her from darkness into this marvelous light. Jesus is the light of the world. God is the light. And people who sit in darkness, in those society, in those seven mountains, some, some of you in the government, United Nations, and you're dwelling in darkness. Some of you in the mountains of education, PhDs, professors, but you are still dwelling in darkness. Some of you in the marketplace, big, uh, big trillionaires, big owners of corporations, but you dwell in darkness. There's no peace in your heart. Some of you in families, in marriages, some of you chasing after false religion, in, in art, in entertainment, in, 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 in many industries that, that are not satisfying you, you may look outwardly that you have all things figured out together. But you are dying inside without the light. You are dying without the word of God. You are dying without the gospel of the kingdom of God. You are dying without the prince of peace on the inside of you. There is no peace. Peace outside of the Prince of Peace, whose name is Jesus. Yes, and uh, in James, it, it's, it's, um, it says in James, Does the scripture mean nothing to you? That says, The spirit that God breathes you into our heart is a jealous lover who intensely desires to have more and more of us. But he continues to pour out more and more grace upon us. For it says, God resists you when you are proud but continually pours out grace when you are humble. So then, surrender to God. 
Stand up to the devil and resist him, and he will turn and run away from you. Move your heart closer and closer to God. Amen. That's in James. That's all about waiting. When we are willing to wait on the Lord, this like all the professors. There are so many professors right now. They need to confess. They need to come. Yes, we have conspired to, to, to destroy humanity because they really want to have a new version of humanity that coming out of their, their, their imagination. But they cannot. Why? Jesus has finished it all. Jesus has made one new man. So there is no other version of humanity. We are the last humanity that exists. And, and what we are in this age, in this coming age that is starting right now, is to learn to wait upon the Lord. Because it's not the same like what we know Christianity that we know uh, from today, yesterday. It's not the same. From today, as you hear the word of God, Christianity is the new version that is coming on earth. We are the new breed of heavenly being on earth. We are not earthly being in heaven. We are heavenly being on earth. Amen. And God sent the help, the ministering angel there in Elijah while he was in the spur. And he fed him with the cake. Cake representing the word of God. Cake representing communion and the water representing also the blood. Because out of his side, the piercing side was the water and the blood where Jesus was pierced with a spear. So now, that's, that's a prophetic picture of going back to the Word of God and begin to eat the flesh of Jesus and drink His blood and receive the nourishment. And then He went again to sleep. And the angel awake Him again and to and fro, awake and strengthened Him for the journey. Many of you have been giving up on your vision, on the true prophetic word, on the calling of God, that God has spoke to you, God visited you, but you had waited maybe one decade, two decades, it didn't come to pass. And then you give up on your dream, give up on your calling, give up on the promises of God. But God says, be still and know this season the helper is coming. The helper is the Holy Spirit. God can directly come, he can come also through the angels. He can come through the messengers and strengthen Elijah to go in this journey of 40 days through the desert in the cave. And then God have encountered with Elijah, says, Elijah, what are you doing? And Elijah says to God, I am a man that's seeking you. I'm so zealous for you. Uh, and yet God says, I have 4,000 people in in, in the nation of Israel who do not bow to Baal, who do not confess evil in his heart, who do not worship devil. And then, the, but the voice, it came not through the storm, not through the earthquakes, not through the fire, not through the whirlwind, but through the still, small voice. And I was just reminded on June uh, 29, 2023, God spoke to me. He says, if you will develop the, the art of waiting upon the Lord, I will use you mightily. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, Lord, develop the art of waiting upon the Lord. And suddenly I saw the beauty of creativity, the prophetic beauty of art of waiting upon the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lord, I'm willing to wait upon you. And the season begins Sometimes it's just waiting 30 minutes, don't say anything. It's just being still. Sometimes one hour, and then God begins to speaking to you, quiet all those other voices, and just be in His presence. And develop this art. And then, and then I was instantly reminded and bring forth to this prophetic picture of an eagle. Uh, and we, we, we all love the scriptures in Isaiah 40, verse 31. We all know by heart, many of you are there. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew the strength. Actually, we know renew, but in the Hebrew, talk about exchange the strength. It's like the cross. Yeah. Exchange. You give your weakness and you receive his strength. 
you, you give your poverty and curse and you receive his prosperity and his blessing. You give him infirmities and pain and malignances, allergies, and viruses, every form of witchcraft, and you took on his divine health. You took on his stripe. So there is an exchange, exchange taking place. And uh, there is one uh, wonderful uh, example and powerful as well. Um, when Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane. Let me read that. Jesus left the upper room with his disciple and as was his habit. It's Jesus' habit. Waiting upon the Lord. Waiting on his Father. Actually, he's waiting on himself even because he is God. But he came as a man and he waited on his father. He left his godness and be with his. So dad. actually, if I may, he actually, while we, he waiting, he fully submit himself to the authority of God's yes. head he is in, as a son of God. He knows he's weak. He realized he cannot do anything without the father. Went to the Mount Olive, his place of secret prayer. There, that's also about waiting. We need to have our secret place. That nobody can enter, not even your husband, not even your wife, not your children. Just you alone waiting upon the Lord. And this is another thing that we need to discover in our walk with God. That the secret place, it doesn't have to be a very special room, a special living room, whatever. It is in the Holy Spirit. Which there is, is the a heart, place. The yes. Of the heart. Yes, there is a place. You can you can be in your waiting moment while you're cooking your lunch, where you're sending your children to school, while you're driving, you are. And I have experienced that moment where I was invisible among of million people, Indonesia's people everywhere. But I was invisible. They wouldn't see me. And there was a rapist group coming to rape every Christian woman that is on the street at 11 o'clock at night. I was there. And I was in the secret place and nobody see me. That is the place that's available for us right now. Because this world is not going to be an easy place for anyone. Not for the world, not for a non-believer, not for the believer. This world is going to become more and more uh, surveillance. CCTV everywhere. We are more exposed. We are more watched. If I come from Switzerland, when I'm sitting everywhere, I know I am on the spotlight. There is no place to hide anymore because they watch everything. And now we have this uh, um, at the airport with the eye recognition, mm -hmm. and then they will know where you are. And now they, in Australia, they just stop the 3G device. With the 5G, they can control everything. The technology. We, I do not say that, that the government, we cannot, because the government belongs to God. But we have to know that the central government of us as a believer is in heaven. And heaven is inside us. And that is where we live. So here, in, in, and Jesus said, then he withdrew from them, so we need to withdraw. From whatever, ministry, work, husband, family, we need to withdraw. Otherwise, we cannot understand what is the meaning of waiting upon the Lord. Then he said, short distance. Then he withdraw from them a short distance. It means Jesus still can. It's withdraw. It means separate Separate yourself. And, and pull yourself pull from yourself. everything. That you can be focused on God, waiting on God. But it's not far. He still can oversee. You can still oversee your your household for the housewife. You can still oversee your children. You can still oversee your ministry. But this is attitude, our heart attitude when we're waiting on the Lord. And then he said, then he withdrew from them a short distance to be alone, kneeling down. He prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup agony away from me. But no matter what, your will must be mine. So it's the will of God. In, in, the, in this moment, we are coming to, 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 to separate ourselves from everything. We know where we are, waiting for what? We are waiting for the will of God. We are not waiting on the Lord because we want provision. We want healing. Yes, it's all. And we have to know, signs and wonders shall follow. 
we do not follow signs and wonders. That has been now the the biggest deception. Mm -hmm. When you have a gift of miracles, then people come to you, that is the other way around. No, Mm -hmm. signs and wonders shall follow us. And sometimes signs and wonders is not always physical. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of time, signs and wonder is a secret talk with God. That's when there is no voice. It's just silent. And that's the signs and wonders. You know, you touched the Gethsemane, and actually this John chapter 17 described this prayer in Gethsemane. It was the heart of God that all of his children, it was Jesus, core of his being, deep from inward being, desire to sweat his blood Mm -hmm. and go through that crushing. And in this John 17, he's praying, Father, I pray that they, those who are, who are they, us, born again through the water and the spirit, those who are entered into the kingdom may be where I am, that you and, and I and the Holy Spirit may be in one. Actually, he, it was his desire to bring us to the same relationship that he have with the Father. And that is why he laid out his life, to bring us to the same union with the Father, to have the Father himself, not just to uh, have uh, uh, handles of blessings, but to have inheritance, inherited the Father himself. Mm-hmm. Not to, just to have the hand of blessing, but to have the blesser. The source of all the blessing. You have the, in, in like, for instance, you go to the shopping mall and you desire to have all this and that. But if you have revelation and you have a relationship with the owner of the shopping center, mm. then he just gives you an invitation. Whatever I have, you have. All the shopping mall, all is yours. Choose whatever you will because you are in my will. You have relationship with me. And I would like to touch in the Hebraic roots five words that constructed that one word, wait upon the Lord. One of them is kavar. It means to bind together in twisting, gather it together, and tarry upon the Lord. Just like Jesus sent the promise of the Father in Luke 24, 49, he says, Go to the city of Jerusalem and tarry until, wait, he used that word, quavar, with five meaning, wait until you endure with the power from on high. Wait, wait until you receive the promise of the Father. Wait until you have that encounter with God. The second word is which means waiting in graciousness upon the Lord. While you waiting, God is gracious to you because He knows that you are waiting upon Him. He knows that you desire to have an appointment with Him. He knows that you love Him. And, you know, when you love someone, like parents love the children, sometimes, you know, you know all the children are different. You know, uh, we're raising the kids. We know all of them are different. But we love the ones that not just seeking their goods from you. We, we, parents love the children all equally. But among them, there are some that are not satisfied. They always say, give me this, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. But the other son that is chosen one could be Joseph. You know, the one that comes along. And just sit on your lap and he, you may ask, what do you want? He says, I just want to be with you. I just want to w- wait upon you. I just want to be in your presence. I don't come to seek the gifts. I don't come to seek all the rewards, all the blessing. I want to know you. That was the desire of Moses. The entire camp of Israel want to know God's exploits, signs and wonders and miracles. But Moses want to know God's ways. So God chosing the people out there, of course, remnant. You are not, 
you know, you, you may be a 7,000 or 70,000 or 7 million, but among there, they are the ones that choose to be chosen to sit in his presence, like Mary that came to Jesus, broke the alabaster, all that she had. She spent all her life, lifehood on that specific uh, aroma and prepared Jesus for burial. And other, other people was injured. So how do you do that? It could be sold, give to the ministry, give to the poor. But Jesus rebuked, rebuked Judas, rebuked the, the guy who was, whose heart was not actually with him. But let her come. The, the third word, word is uh, rafach, which means to be still and to draw near to God. This is what James says. James, draw near to God. And God will draw near to you. So this is the waiting, the same waiting upon the Lord to stay. And that also, the root of that word is Rapha. It is the healing. Jehovah Rapha, Yahweh Rapha means to cure, to heal physically, to make whole, wholesome, to repair, and to make whole. So now look how benefits it's coming. Now fourth word. The fifth word is Daman, which means to stop. To hold peace, to be quiet, to rest, rest. This is what the children of Israel did not enter into his rest. They die in the wilderness. The book of Hebrew is all about enter into his rest. And Jesus is saying to you today, in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, with outstretched hand, Wild at the cross, so wild like the cross. He says, come unto me, all who are weary of death. Come unto me, and I will give you rest. I will give you peace. I will give you stillness. I will give you healing. Some of you is getting healed now. Yes. You just feel like a mist yes. is going there. You just get healed. Whatever depression, the, the, some of you just being healed from depression, yes. some anxieties, yes. uh, hopelessness. Yes. You, uh, yeah, there you go. You just healed through the Holy Spirit. He's coming right now yes. through those legs, through those, yes. through those legs. He's coming yes. in this stillness and quietness, being healed. You are being whole right now. You are being healed. Yes. You are being complete. You are being whole. Thank you, Lord. He's healed. Now you know him. Because you be still and you know. You know he's a healer. Some of you are confused at that. He's coming to give you sound mind. Yes. You don't know between the left and to the right. You don't know with this age of, of confusion when they flipped off the, the holy law from the Ten Commandments to the corrupted law. And you are being confused because the spirit of confusion comes there and, and he's God giving us all the way, not the spirit of confusion or fear, but the sound mind. The sound mind to recognize the right with the wrong. He gives us the mind of Christ. So now while we are waiting, Lucy, this healing is coming. Healing to the multitudes of people. Yes. Healing to the backslider ministers. Yes. There are many of you that have been given up on your ministries. Yes. During the lockdown, you have been pastor, many of you pastors of the mega churches, and now you are pretending because you, before lockdown, you were all playing games and changing the mask. But God has extended his love towards you because he don't want your soul to slip into the eternal hell. So he extended an invitation to you, the final call and the final invitation to repent of every committed sin, remove that ma mask of you, and to give you life in abundance and to give you second chance, and to give you restoration, and to give you hope, and give you reality in Christ. Because he don't want your soul to be perish. He don't want to be to tell you what was written, like among the others, says, did not we prophesy in your name? Some of, some of you are making... Uh, millions or thousands of the false prophecies you are charging. But God says, freely you receive and freely give. 
freely receive the revelation and freely give. Some of you are false prophets, false apostles. The book of Revelation described. Some of you has not been shedding the, uh, shedding the blood for the gospel of the kingdom of God. Some of you have been not in prison. Some of you has not been suffering and suffocating and paying the penalty of, of agony and long suffering. That was the price and reward of the early apostles and prophets. For, for the words they were prophesied, the reward was prison. For the words that were prophesied to the kings, the words was death to be martyred. They didn't look to handing out except the false prophets and the false apostles, which we describe entire in the prophetic on the age and, and, and the apostolic on the end of the age in those two epistles we describe in details. So God is telling all of you up there, all of you backsliders, all of you lukewarm, all of you who used to know Jesus, but something happened in your life, either sudden divorce or you lost your job or your company collapsed or your wife cheat on you and walk on other or your husband cheat on you and walk on someone else or maybe maybe the sickness in your family, maybe the one who you love the most in your heart have been sudden. Uh, uh, diagnosed with some sicknesses and diseases and infirmity that they actually killed them to death and your heart getting was so cold towards God. You were calling upon God and, and, some, and somehow you think God abandoned you. God didn't answer your call, but God was there all the way and God is there all the time. All you have to do is just come to the cross. It's just come to Jesus or who you who are weary in well-doing try to perform your religious duties, try to, to make things happen, you just have to come to Jesus. There's no other short way. Jesus is the door, as Pastor Lucy says, Jesus is the door. He is the door, and He's standing at the door. All you have to do is just waiting. On the Lord and open that door, and He will. And for the one who are depending on others to receive prophecy, to receive teaching, let the Lord Himself teach you. He is willing to take you into His own discipleship. And from there, you can meet the preacher that is assigned to you, the prophet that is assigned to you, but the Holy Spirit is the filter to all truth, because He is the absolute truth. Jesus is the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other minister could say the same statement. Only Jesus. I am the way, the gate, I am the truth, and I'm the life. So you have the way, you have the truth, you have the life. Wait on him, and he's waiting for you just like he was waiting for the Samaritan woman. We are all like Samaritan woman. I am like Samaritan woman. I'm struggling inside every day. Every day. People in the world say, well, why do you need Jesus? I need Jesus just to open my mouth right now. I need him for everything. And because of that, waiting upon the Lord is heart attitude. It is in your heart. Everything is in your heart. And He's knocking at the heart. And then when we start to wait, you can practice this right now. You just keep your heart and determine where is your brain, where is your heart, and where is your senses. Your senses is in your skin. And your brain, you could just feel it on the top of your head. And your heart, you just hear the heartbeat. And below the heartbeat, just right on your belly button, that's your spirit is. So when you hear the heartbeat and you say, Abba, Jesus, Holy Spirit, here I am. I'm willing. Just in the Song of Solomon, um, Four, six, 
I have made up my mind until the darkness disappears and the dawn has fully come. In spite of shadows and fears, I will go to the mountain top with you, the mountain of suffering love and the hill of burning incense. Yes, I will be your bride. When you say yes, yes as a bride, yes as a son, yes as a, as a, a servant to the king, yes as a minister to the high priest, we have all this identity given through Jesus who died on the cross. We are son, we are servant, we are minister, and we are bride. So depends on what we are right now. What, what is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the way to assess our, our identity. Yes, our identity is the Son of God, the children of God. But from son, from servant to sonship, to, priest, to the priest, to the king, and to the bride. The bride is the most that, that not only few, I believe, could be in this part of the bridal. Because the bride has, has a, a same heart, has compatible maturity. It's equal to Jesus. And we have to be honest with God. What am I now? Maybe I'm just a, a, a baby. I am not even coming into maturity. I still need to be discipled. I still need to be ministered to. I still need to be prayed for. It's okay. The most important that we can stand boldly and he will put the garment. He will clothe us with the clothes that we are meant to be, that we do not minister even though we are not a minister yet. We are not coming into this uh, training as a minister. We are not coming as a bride. We are not yet. But because we do not wait on the Lord, we promoted ourselves. Self-promotion is so rampant. I have seen it everywhere. And it's very sad because we become a stumble block for the unbeliever. That we do not allow them to come. The position that you take as a preacher is actually for somebody else. Give it up. Wait on the Lord. Where is your place? Amen. You know, that, 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 that was a key. Because you, you, you're sitting there, multitudes of people, and you have a treasure in your earthly vessels. That treasure, those gifts and calling that God gave it to you uh, did not come yet to the surface. That is why you have to wait upon the Lord. While you are waiting, out of your belly will flow river of water. In that, it's not passive word as I describe in a five foundational Hebrew word. It is very active word. It, it is a, a waiting is a period of preparation where God preparing your heart. He preparing, he removing out of your heart the stumbling block. He removing out of your mind the wrong teaching and the wrong way of thinking and the wrong doctrine and the wrong spirit. And he is cleaning and cleansing you while you are waiting, preparing for the Lord to come and minister to you and activate this beautiful treasure that you have in your earthly vessels. Sister Lucy... What would be the final word that you will just release to the people to make them awake from the sleep? Yes. I think awake, I, Beulah. Awake, you sleeper. <laughs> awake, you sleeper. I, can read the scripture. I remember the scriptures from uh, 1 Corinthians says, Awake, Paul says, the apostle, Awake, awake to what? To righteousness. Yes. Not awake to revival, not to awake your religious sermon or religious duties, but awake into righteousness mm -hmm. and sin no more. And all the preachers of old and all the apostle prophets, the message is always the same. The man built on the message of Christ himself. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Awake Beulah, we mentioned Europe. Switzerland, and, and uh, the nation of Beulah is, is a 
is a continent of 50 nations in one continent. Just like there are 50 states in India. And there are 50 states in the United States. This is all 50s, 50s, 50s. Yes. God is speaking something about 50, which has to do in this time and this era with the Jubilee. Yes. With the Jubilee of 50. A Jubilee is a sign of freedom. Jesus preached Isaiah 61 verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. So the Spirit of the Lord, we have the first move before the coming of the Lord Jesus. John the Baptist preparing the way. Now Jesus move, which is the move of revolutionary of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The revolutionary movement of Jesus Christ. A people coming up from the new ages the teachers of the new ages, the students of the new ages, and they are born again and spirit filled on fire for God. They don't want the religion because they have all the religion of darkness in the past decades. All they want is Jesus Christ, the light of the world. So when they come in, they have the revolution of Jesus. Revolutionize the society, revolutionize the seven mountains of society, the revolution of Jesus Christ, which is the preparing the way for the second coming of the Lord Jesus. Not the first anointing of John the Baptist, but the anointing of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to preparing the way for the second coming of the Lord Jesus, whose eyes are like flame of fire. John described Jesus with his eyes as a flame of fire. With the eyes of the purity. With the eyes of the holiness. With the eyes of the righteousness. That is why he's speaking to us. Awake into righteousness. We know that the kingdom of God is righteousness and joy and peace in the Holy Spirit. The kingdom is not in denomination. The kingdom is not in organization. The kingdom is not in foundations. The kingdom of God is in the spirit of God. That is why it was necessary for the Cornelius, uh, John chapter 3, uh, uh, Nicodemus, and the household of Cornelius to, to be born into the kingdom of God. To be baptized in water in the, and in the spirit of God so that they can enter into the kingdom of God of righteousness and joy and peace in the Holy Spirit. And the kingdom of God is within you. So now we have the king inside of us. Our heart being prophetically prepared to be the throne of the king, Sister Lucy. Yes. And, and, and the king being enthroned in our hearts. And then... The king has full liberty in our lives to rule and reign yes. in our lives. And I have experienced this in my, in my whole life. Wow, when I go to the government, they recognize I carry the government of heaven. I remember one time, who is behind you? How dare you to come to this place of authority? I didn't say any words, but... I know Jesus is behind me. Jesus backed me off. So five minutes, the letter that I need from the government, signed. That's authority. We don't need to speak. They just know it. I don't have to answer every request of the world. I don't have to say anything. But the authority, when he take place in our heart, they know. Everyone that we are facing every day, they know there is God in us. They may not know him, but he knows them. So here in Hebrew 12, um, 25 until 29, make very sure that you never refuse to listen to God when he speaks. Like what all the word of God is coming out from Pastor Peter today. If there is something that's stirring your heart, take it to your waiting place and wait on the Lord on that words. And you will see what doors is going to open for you. The door is going to open for you and enter it. Enter only the door that is open for you. That opened by Holy Spirit itself. 
For the God who spoke on earth from Sinai is the same God who now speaks from heaven. Those who heard him speak his living word on earth found nowhere to hide. So what chance is there for us to escape if we turn our backs on God and refuse to hear his warning as he speaks from heaven? The earth was rocked at the sound of his voice from the mountain, but now he has promised. Once and for all, I will not only shake the system of the world, but also the unseen powers in heavenly realms. It's happened right now. God is shaking. God is destroying one system and coming to the new. And this, don't miss it. Do not miss it. I pray that all of us that is listening to this uh, recording, do not miss this moment of God. It is not about today, tomorrow. It's not the, the, the earthly timeline. It is the spiritual. It is everything that is already done by Jesus on the cross. Now this praise once and for all clearly indicates the final removal of things that are shaking. That is the old order. They want to speed up everything in their agenda, but they are fulfilling the word of God. We are in the new order, but it's not the order of the enemy. It's the order of our father. Order of Melchizedek. And for 20 years now, the prophet, the true prophet has said, put your house in order. Put your house in order. In order, it's not one prophet who said it. It is the prophetic, the Holy Spirit in you. Because we have the prophet inside us. That's the Holy Spirit. So with the Holy Spirit speaking, put your house in order because we are in the new order. So only what is unsakeable will remain. What is the unsakeable? Jesus. And we are his body. We are part of him. We are, when we wait on the Lord, we are being transformed into becoming like him. And we are becoming one with him and his body being built on earth. And the head is in heaven. But we are the body. So we wait on him and transformation happen. Revolution happen. That's or when we're waiting. And lining into who we are in heaven. Since we are receiving our rights to an unsakeable kingdom. So we have the right. We have the right. We should be extremely thankful and offer, offer God the purest worship that delight his heart. So his heart has to be delighted with our waiting. But most of us has been educated to wait on the promise, to wait on the prophetic words, to wait on the, uh, uh, on the calling, to wait. No, we are not waiting for that. We are waiting for he himself to reveal who he is personally to us. Who God today to me is different who God today to Pastor Peter and to Brother Stephen here. It's different, but it's the same. So when I fulfill who I am as who I am to God and who is to me, that we are building the body of Christ. And we are in obedience. We are into one obedience, the obedience of Christ. When I obey God in my small little life, and Pastor Peter obey his life, and Brother Stephen obey his life, we are building the same obedience, and that's obedience of Christ. That's where we come in the same table with him. We are fellowship with him, and we becoming him, and we becoming him on earth. He's not coming to be like us. No, he's coming as a powerful and nobody can stand him without holiness. Everything that is not in holiness will be burned. Amen. The only one who stands is the one who is compatible that truly like him. And that's what we are waiting for. We are waiting to be transformed, to becoming like Jesus. That's what we are waiting now. We are not looking for what is outside. I... I I don't know when is the great tribulation coming, but for us from Switzerland, it is already great tribulation already because happened. nobody wants Jesus. Mm -hmm. They are building the, the CERN, CERN. They need, everybody say, oh, we have to save electricity, but what they are doing in their own mind who are against God, they are using all electricity to, to build this, uh, uh, the collider. 
the hydrochloride to, to, to open the gateway with all the ceremony. They invite all the demon with the human sacrifice. They let the hell coming out because your only thing that can uh, the Satan escape, the angel and his demon can escape hell if they do human sacrifice. But for us, we are in the other realm. We are in the realm of holiness. We are in the realm of heaven. Yes, our body is still suffering on earth, but our spirit is 100% in heaven. And that's why we need to align ourselves to who we are in Holy Spirit. So my brother, I'm so thankful for Brother Peters today that this is our main ministry right now, to wait upon the Lord. And I'm sensing that many of you are working in the government. You're occupying high positions in the government. Uh, some of them, and they even uh, kings and royal families. You are all government workers, officers, and uh, you have a burning desire in your heart, deep inside of you, to serve God in those places that God put you in. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Just like Joseph. Just like uh, Daniel. Just like Mordecai. And uh, Esther. And many others who occupy the governmental position, a place of influence, that you have an influence over millions of people, tens of tens of yes. millions of people. Yes. But, but you, you have also that deep inside calling mm -hmm. that you don't know to whom to counsel. You don't know to who can lead you and guide you. You are welcome to contact us. But I want you to po po post set everything aside and look to the word of God yes. and, and go at that door, at that door that Jesus knocking because he's standing at that door and that door. So you can open in Isaiah chapter nine, verse from six to seven says, for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given, and the government, the government will be upon his shoulder, kingdom authority, kingdom government, all government it comes from the Lord, the righteous government, the true government. He puts you there to be a voice. If you they slaughter the firstborn babies and aborted babies, for you to not to be silent and compromise what the enemy is doing, but to stand up and arise and to shine with the word of truth. That thou shall not murder, thou shall not kill, which is the, the Ten Commandments of God. Regarding of it was nothing new under the heaven. There's nothing new. It wasn't new in the days of Moses when Pharaoh was slaughtering all the babies. It wasn't new on the days of Moses when Herod was King Herod slaughtered all the, the, the firstborn baby to two years old and under. It was nothing in their generation and, and it was nothing new in our generation. But we must be the voice, not the echo. We must be the voice. Sometimes it just need the voice to be to, to those voiceless. You must be like the lionist to stand against the rolling lions who's seeking to steal, kill, and destroy. You must be the voice in the government. You must be the voice in the parliament, the voice of righteousness, the voice of justice, the voice of truth. And God will always backing you up through the power of the Holy Spirit. God is your defense. God is your refuge. He is your fortress. He is your God. Thousand will fall at your side. Ten thousand at your right hand. But it shall not come near you. Because the word of God will not return to you void. Says the Lord. And his name will be called Wonderful. Counselor. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. There's no peace of this world. Apart from the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the Messiah himself. Yes. Of the increase of his government yes. and peace. Look, peace again. There will be no end yes. upon the throne of David yes. and over his kingdom. Yes. To order it and to establish it yes. with judgment and justice. 
from that time forward even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The Lord of hosts is mentioned most than any other characteristic of God. The Lord of hosts is mentioned multi, more than 19 times in Malachi chapter 3. The Lord of hosts representing Yahweh Tsevaot, the Lord of the heavenly armies, with angelic hosts, with Michael and Gabriel representing the messengers of God and the warriors of God. God is saying, there are more with us, yes. Sister Lucy, Amen. than those who were against us. Yes. It was in the days of Elijah and the days of Elisha when the army was inventing the prophet and, and shut the voice of righteousness. He could not be still because the fire was burning in his bones because the righteousness was coming from his mouth. And, and then there was a servant called in the Gehazi. And Elijah prayed, Lord, open the eyes of the servant that they may, he may see. And he saw the chariots of fire. He saw the horses. He saw the, the army of hosts of Yahweh Sebaot taking the, the, the vengeance upon their enemies. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to be afraid. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be tossed to the left and to the right. It is a time. It's a final time for humanity and led by the children of God. It is our time. And he said that, that this is the time to love God, to not be afraid to die. Because we live forever. So because of that, we are to go for the righteousness of God in every level. Yes, the whole mountain structure, the old order is crumbled right now. But the kingdom is rising up. And they will catching up. They will catching up. And because it has to be fulfilled as in the scripture. Just like when Judas was appeared that Jesus is to go to the cross. That's the same. For the final judgment to come, the son of perdition will come again. But for us right now, we are for righteousness. Amen. There are so many nations have legalized everything that abomination to the Lord. But we need to stand to say no. We wait upon the Lord. We do not agree with anything that God disagrees. Amen. So we're occupying okay. until Amen. Jesus, Amen. Jesus comes. Thank you for being with us, beloved. Thank you, Sister Lucy. Thank you, Sister. God bless you. And God love you and bless you all. Shalom. Stay tuned. God bless you.